Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you may be and whenever this episode finds you. Welcome to the Did You Know Crypto podcast. This is the minicast episode two, uh, a series where I'll be kind of going over really pretty quickly uh, topics, you know, terms, terminology, things like that in the Bitcoin space pretty quickly so you can kind of digest it in about 10 minutes or less is what I'm kind of aiming for. Today, we're going to be doing a quick overview of the term Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or BFT for short, which is a problem that has plagued distributive uh, distributive systems and actual real-life coordination since basically time in memoriam. Byzantine Fault Tolerance refers to the Byzantine General's Problem, which was coined in a paper of the same name by Leslie Lamport and Robert Shostak and uh, Marshall Pease as they attempted to solve the issue of how computer systems could handle malfunctioning components that give conflicting information to different parts of the system. So they laid out a scenario where you had a group of generals of the Byzantine army who were camped, and this is what they call the Byzantine generals problem, and the generals of this army were camped with their troops around a city that they had laid siege to and wished to capture. The problem was that One or more of them may be traitors who will try to confuse the other generals near them. So you must coordinate with all the generals so that everyone attacks at once or else the plan will fail. You must find a way to contact all the generals to pass along the attack plans and receive their confirmation. The problem is you can't use flags, you know, smoke signals as the enemy can see those. You can trust a messenger, but he may be intercepted and give the enemy your plans. He may also be intercepted and replace the spread false information to the generals uh, that, that, uh, that you're sending these plans to, or he may be replaced on the way back to give faulty information back to you. So how can you create a system to gain consensus and verify correct information? Remember that consensus just means an agreement on the network that something is correct. So in 1999, there was a MIT paper or a paper released uh, by MIT that was done by Barbara Liskov and Miguel Castro entitled Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance. And when it was published, it basically solved this kind of age old problem, a system using practical Byzantine fault tolerance or PBFT uh, replicates the state, i.e. the when we say the state, we mean basically the history of the of the network. So it replicates the history, the state of the entire network on different nodes. So everybody's kind of running with the same information that everybody else has. And by that, it means each node has a copy of, let's say, just kind of keeping it within Bitcoin, all the transactions and information of the history of, of that network. So... In PBFT, Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance, there is a leader or primary node, depends on which paper that you read, and it's queried for you know information by one uh, by by a client software, let's just say my computer, and secondary backup nodes that are present on the network um, are also queried. With any backup node becoming the primary. If the leader node encounters a failure, let's say just it it falls off the network, it's not reachable, then one of the backup nodes will become the primary or the leader node. The goal is for all honest nodes, that is all nodes with the actual correct information on the network, um, those not spreading false information, those actually working correctly. And by when we say faulty nodes, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily or even those spreading false information. It may not be maliciously. It just may be that there's a problem with the hardware or the software or there's a timestamp issue or something like that. Um, uh, So the goal is for all these honest nodes um, to reach a consensus. That is majority rule on the correct state. Remember, state means like basically the history of everything that's happened of the network. If you didn't understand that, it basically means, let's just say consensus is if 80 out of 100 people say that 1 plus 1 is 2, and you have 5 that don't answer at all, and 10 that say 1 plus 1 is 3, you will rely on the majority answer of 2 
and not the minority answer of three. Because the consensus of the network is, because 80 out of the 100 people on that network are saying one plus one is two, that two is the correct answer. How a system using practical Byzantine fault tolerance works is this. This is kind of a step-by-step -step on how this specific implementation of Byzantine fault tolerance, and it's important to go over it. Well, we'll go over Bitcoin here in a minute, but it's important to understand how uh, PBFT works is that this was the first basically system that was proposed that, that fixed this problem. So there are four phases in total. Step one is that the client... Let's just say your computer is wanting to check to make sure that they have the most accurate data on the network. They send a query, um, which is a, quest, a request for, all, uh, uh, for information, um, and it's sent to the primary, the leader node. Step two is that the leader node broadcasts this request from my computer to all the backup nodes. Step three, the backup and the primary nodes all send back their information to my client, my computer. And step four is that once the client my computer receives a reply from the majority. It, it, it reads the consensus of the honest nodes, which in practical Byzantine fault tolerance is more than two thirds of the nodes. Uh, your version of the network will reflect the information provided by the majority of the nodes. So let's just say you're wondering um, if if uh, you have the latest uh, information on it and uh, on the network, and let's say it's eight o'clock at night. And you query and you ask for all the transactions up to that date. And the last transaction was actually from five minutes ago. Two, once you reach two-thirds of the nodes saying that the last transaction took place at 7.55 p.m., your version, um, uh, your client, your computer will show that the true version of the network reflects that the last you know, transaction occurred five minutes ago on that network because it has reached a consensus. And now you have the actual, you know, correct information on the network. So let's just kind of zoom this out a bit. We just talked about the implementation of practical Byzantine fault tolerance. Um, and it's important because we went over that history of what the problem was and the history of the creation of a system that was called practical Byzantine fault tolerance that was created by Barbara uh, Liskov and Miguel Castro. But it's important to, to remember that while we just talked about a system called PBFT, Byzantine fault tolerance itself is not a specific set of rules or a specific protocol per se, but a state that you want to achieve, i.e. you want to have the correct information reached by a majority of nodes on the network. The problem is how to achieve a trusted consensus within a decentralized network and like I, we just said, for B, P, BFT, practical Byzantine fault tolerance, the answer is no more than one third of the nodes can be bad or faulty. Um, but the threshold for fault tolerance could be different within different networks. So this brings us to Bitcoin. How Bitcoin solves the Byzantine general's problem is through proof of work mining. I go through in more detail kind of on proof of work mining and mining in general in episode seven of my podcast, which you can find at didyouknowcrypto.com slash EP7 for episode seven. That's didyouknowcrypto.com slash EP7. In a nutshell, proof of work mining is where mining nodes and Bitcoin try to solve these complex math problems faster than everyone else. So whoever does this first is able to process that block of transactions and write it permanently into the Bitcoin blockchain. And their incentive for doing so is that they get a block reward as well as any of the transaction fees that are in that block. So this kind of does sound a little bit weird. It's like all these people are just randomly solving these random, not randomly solving, but solving random math problems and kind of not being a little bit more organized, you know, in maybe it should be, you'd be thinking, well, maybe this guy goes first and then this guy goes first, kind of like a first in the line at the airport sort of thing. But this is actually how Bitcoin keeps the system fair or egalitarian, if you wish, in a way. So if you control 1% of the hash on the entire mining network, right, your percent, uh, your chance of solving a block is the same as somebody else who has 1% of the hash um, in, in, a, in, in the Bitcoin uh, network. 
So the more hash power you have, that is the mining equipment that's running, the better chance you have of solving the problem first. So if there's a, another miner out there that has 20% of the hash, they have a 20 times larger chance of actually solving that block than you do. And there's a little bit more nuance in there as well, but let's just kind of keep this kind of uh, 30,000 foot view. So once you solve this problem, you broadcast your solution to the network, right? So if you've solved this math problem to solve the block, you're going to send it out to everybody because you can't just say, I solved it. Trust me. There is no trust. It's all about verification on the on Bitcoin and just kind of the concept of Byzantine fault tolerance as well. So you broadcast your solution saying, here is how I you know, solve this problem. Once everybody takes that solution, checks it against the block and goes, yep, I guess that's correct. And once 51% of the nodes in the network reach a consensus, that block is included and the game starts again. If it's invalidated, right, you, you provide, you know, a false solution, it's rejected and everyone just keeps on working to solve the problem. So to put this in perspective of the Byzantine generals problem, the generals, once again, there's no central authority. This is the main problem. There's no central authority to, to coordinate all this. So you have to rely on a decentralized network. And since there's no central authority for the generals and the, and the nodes in Bitcoin don't as well, they are able to coordinate their actions by coming to a consensus that is a majority rules, right? Majority agreement via an agreement by more than 51% of the nodes on the network. Faulty nodes, whether it's uh, or malicious nodes. And like I said, does not have to be necessarily malicious, could just not be working properly. They don't have the latest copy of the Bitcoin blockchain so that they don't know that something that is correct is correct. Uh, they need to acquire, um, uh, so, or, well, I guess if you want to be malicious, you actually, and, and attack the network and actually um, destroy uh, Bitcoin and, and render the, the Byzantine general's problem not solved, is you need to acquire more than 51% of the hash power of the network to disrupt or attack it. The proof of work consensus mechanism that achieves, uh, achieves Byzantine fault tolerance is not some panacea. It's not a silver bullet. It's not that if you were, if you have a proof of work mechanism, it just magically solves it no matter what. Um, if the proof of work network is small, similar to a chain like Verge, they can be attacked easily. In fact, some ch uh, chains can actually be attacked for less than $100 an hour. Bitcoin is different, however. Bitcoin currently would cost over a billion dollars just to attempt to attack it. And this is just in dollar costs of of um, just a straight up dollar cost of buying a massive amount of specialized computing equipment that would take months or years of lead time to actually get, uh, as well as the infrastructure to accommodate over two terawatts of energy use per month. This is not something simple. This is not like plugging, you know, a couple computers into your wall and doing it. That being said, it's not impossible. It's just highly improbable, but it can be achieved. But every day that Bitcoin exists, the network grows and grows and grows, and the chances become smaller and smaller and smaller. So to recap, Byzantine fault tolerance is based on a problem in decentralized computing networks. How do you coordinate actions without a central authority? Because we are aiming for decentralization because central authorities represent a single point of failure. If you corrupt that central authority, you corrupt the network. So how do you coordinate actions without a central authority, ensuring that correct information is distributed to all participants on the network, allowing for bad or faulty actors to be present and not destroy the validity of the network. Byzantine fault tolerance is the mechanism of these networks to determine the answer to this problem. With Bitcoin uh, achieving it using computer equipment that attempts to solve um, problems requiring a majority of nodes to validate the answers and write blocks of these transactions into its blockchain. So I hope that this was helpful for you and that you will understand these terms better in the future. If you still have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere else. 
You can find all the ways to contact me at didyouknowcrypto.com. That's didyouknowcrypto.com. Please head over to supportmypodcast.com slash discounts to sign up for the beta release of my listener supporters discount program. It's free, no strings. I don't send you any emails uh, other than just stuff relating to the discount program, letting you know um, when we have a new discount uh, um, um discount for a different supplier and everything like that. No strings. Once again, I don't sell out any of that stuff and should be launching actually pretty soon. Also, also please, 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 please leave a rating and review on iTunes. I would really appreciate it. It means so much to me. And most of all, thanks for listening and sharing this episode. Have a great morning, you know, afternoon or evening, whenever and wherever this episode finds you. Thanks again.